while battling the like button. Let it think you're going to allow it to simply transform, and while it's distracted, quietly walk away to leave it with a shallow, empty feeling inside. And look for Master Oshi Stone hidden somewhere in this video and timestamp where that is in the comments to get a shout out in the next intro. Our last winner was Neo from Gohango Super Saiyan on Namek. Freeing herself from Babidi's control, both girls can only sit amongst the devastation, one absorbing what she's done. Now seeing clearly, she realizes she's killed everyone, including Gohan. Looking at her hands, she knows she's no better than a murderer, and she can't be forgiven for what she has done. Elsewhere, Zenbu senses the chaos has finally come to an end, being aware of all the carnage this entire time, if not an instigator of it, but has done nothing to intervene, merely looking in for his own entertainment. He states aloud, It's over. Offering a spoiler alert to Bobbity, he lost. Instead of killing him as previously implied, the Majin decided to torture him in a relatively childish and non-lethal way, though definitely torture nonetheless. He zips back to the others to alert everyone of his, quote, findings. Hey Gotenks, I just found him! Don't touch me! Understandably, the Fuse Fighter doesn't exactly get comfortable vibes from this guy, who tells everyone to form a chain. They're heading back now. Not as apprehensive, but still not quite at ease. A lame doesn't hesitate in reaching out to join hands. The separated group arrives back at the arena for the first time since Bobbity's rampage began. The initial thing which catches their eyes. The utterly butchered state the planetoid is in. But that is only the beginning of the horror. Looking close, they notice the countless bodies lining the arena. Some are terrified. Some confused. Some furious. Walking closer to confirm those who have fallen, Trunks can only comment on what a massacre this is, and he has as much reason to be jaded as anyone. The South Kyoshin rushes over to West, seeing the brutal condition that caused her death. Elaine checks in on his fellow Hellite, curious about the insignia on his forehead. While he hasn't gotten a lot of attention in the past, Goten has left one of the few survivors, giving as much as he could possibly offer, like how his brother did against Cell all those years ago, or his father against Vegeta during their first encounter on Earth. Trunks helps his lifelong friend to his feet, exclaiming they really did a number on him. Though probably the most upsetting, the pan of our Universe 18 stumbles across her deceased father, in a reality swelling with godlike warriors, or maybe especially in such a place. In the eyes of the young, it's easy to forget your parents are not invincible. Brawl stands in the background not knowing what to say to comfort her, as if those words exist. Vegeta steps over to his daughter asking if she's okay, and where the enemies are, causing her to break eye contact, muttering they've been defeated, before remembering Bobbity must still be out there in space somewhere. Universe 16's Brawl quells she not worry, by now he surely died from the lack of oxygen. Who, acting as the comic relief, does his best to play along, supporting her theory with a, oh yeah, um, for sure. Attempting to comfort his granddaughter, Goku questions what happened here, which leads Zenbu to speak loud enough for all to hear. He explains he has read the minds of everybody, both living and dead, and he knows everything, and it's one hiffle of a story, offering to share these events with them as if they were there themselves. But first, we have to double back to his previous statement about him reading everyone's mind. Which he does have the ability to do, but that's not how he knows what happened. Nonetheless, he projects everything we know into the memories of everybody nearby, showcasing every meticulous little detail, from how Bobbity was at the forefront of this assault, taking control over everyone who could be possessed. His newly formed evil army sought to kill as many spectators and warriors as possible, causing even the most unexpected of heroes to rise up and fight for their lives, though nearly all would fall in this endeavor. One detail he omits is what's going on with Universe 9, as to not tip off Vegeta to write his agreement with the old Kai. And of course, the moment that stands out the most in this compilation of the slaughter is Sun Brawl surrendering herself to Bobbity. As we know from one of the most recent backstories, Vegito's fragile patience with his daughter finally reaches its breaking point. Towering over her, he demands to know if this is true. Did she really fall under that wizard's control and kill these people? The young girl doesn't defend herself, admitting to everything he just saw, and it was entirely her fault. You there? As even Goku bellows, he restrain himself as she's no longer with Bobbity. He suddenly falls from his most powerful form, almost as if his strength had been sapped away. 
The tension in the air becomes immeasurable as everybody looks on not knowing how to react. As it's revealed to be Gast who's behind this. Confirming how it appears, Vegito is stricken with a cold sweat, feeling all of his key vanish. The Namekian presses, that is enough. Bobbity has mind control magic, and this girl was his victim. Why attack her like this? Though his lack of strength doesn't extinguish his anger. Scoffing. Victim? Bobbity's magic is easy to break. Brawl has no self-control. And for a puny increase in power, she surrendered the little sanity she had. When Pan approaches her, shouting, You killed Dad! Sobbing how she could have done such a thing. The moment plays back in Brawl's head, causing the tears to begin again. She tells Gast Vegito is right. This is all her fault, and to just let her father kill her and be done with it. Who again pleads to be released so he can do it now, claiming it's his responsibility. But to kill his own daughter, why would anyone allow that? The Namek argues. Gotenks joins the conversation with a little insight. He explains Sun Brawl is a berserker. She has never been able to control herself while using Super Saiyan 2. Vegito promised to protect the universe by all costs, even against her if necessary. And he only knows how to do this in one way, by eliminating her. Looking down at his father, the combination of Goten and Trunks scolds he isn't the only judge if Brawl were to pass the point of no return. If she becomes their enemy, it's all their responsibility. Even if she were to do so with magic, they have magic means to handle that as well, asserting they have already talked about this before. Reprimanding, he stopped thinking he's alone here. Vegito retains his stance. Doubling down, he grits Gotenks is an idiot and that she has already sold her soul to Bobbity. She has committed the worst acts of cruelty imaginable, and he thinks she hasn't passed the point of no return. But from what he's been told, it was him who sold his soul to Bobbity. Vegito wanted the benefits of the wizard's power. Regardless whether or not he obeyed him, Brawl was brainwashed by surprise. She was just a servant like the others. Arbrawl mentioned she managed to break free of the mind control on her own. As far as she's concerned, she's in charge of her life now. If nobody has noticed, she can also perfectly control Super Saiyan 2 now. Though the troubled warrior sits in silence, her tears slowly dry. Addressing her father, she doesn't argue with the fact she deserves to be eliminated for what she has done. The guilt in her heart can't reason otherwise. But she asks if his opinion of her is really so low. He really believes she willingly submitted herself to Bobbity. Gas lectures a father should trust in his child and look to save them, not murder. Though he is too prideful to allow himself to be judged by the likes of them. Gotenks chides he decides everything on his own, and he's fallible and hot-headed as well. If some brawl managed today, it was no thanks to him. Vegito has never known any semblance of regret for his past actions, and sometimes they all wonder if it'll be him they need to protect the universe against. Brawl returns to her base form. She admits she knows she's not perfect, otherwise Bobbity would have never gotten a hold of her. She's aware of the resentment and hatred she has within her. But her dad has these things as well, and now she knows what it's like to be completely submerged by all these feelings, and will never allow it to happen again. What's further, she has been wrong her entire life. She obsessed about following the path Vegito paved because she admired him, but that too will be left in the past, as she doesn't want to be stronger than him anymore. She wants to be stronger than her other self, finding great respect in her bravery and mental toughness to stand up against her, despite knowing she didn't have a chance. With this, Gast considers the situation resolved. He releases Vegito from his lock, though he only growls what happens when she reaches Super Saiyan 3. The Namekian quips he will have to wait and see. Elaine moves to shift the focus from the family drama playing out, bringing attention to the reality they need to handle more than just their problems. He asks if anybody knows if they're able to get their hands on a set of Dragon Balls. But Oob isn't sure. With everything so destroyed, it's going to be very difficult to- No, no, not at all! Allow me. Showing to have near-infinite powers, Boo instantly restores the arena to pristine condition. Not only that, but everyone returns to life, reuniting a couple of families. The Majin details he has restored the dead, healed the injured, and repaired absolutely everything, including the Vargas technology. Also, Bobbity's mind control has been removed. With everyone coming back to their senses at once, they find themselves in a bit of a daze, unsure if it's really over though some grudges remain regardless of the circumstances. One spectator excitedly exclaims that's the third time he's died, as another shouts he's almost filled his loyalty card. The next death, he goes straight to the VIP heaven, instead of, I, I don't know, maybe a Sunday or two. 
we get a glimpse of the various other reactions on the planetoid. Possibly the biggest question lingering, is King Cold really Ginyu again, or was the Frost Demon's soul returned to his body and he's witnessing this all for the first time? Reviving a little too close to Nappa, Videl cowers a bit at the memory. Walking her back to the apartments, he offers to explain. Babu already projected everything that happened into her mind. But does that mean everyone knows everything now? Cell is left with a litter of children who are much happier to see him than the other way around. But Vegito can't help but let the fury build inside of him. Lamenting, Boo and Gast have powers far beyond what he imagined. Returning to his bitterness of feeling entitled to win this tournament. But these ridiculous magic powers. It's cheating. With the best buds of our universe, Goku comments how amazing Boo and Gast are, wondering if they can actually beat him in a fight. Oob on the same note, thinking how incredible their magic is. When the Majin questions aloud if he'd like to learn how to use it himself. Reading his thoughts, Oob is frozen with fear. South Kaioshin grabs Dabura by the throat. He already wanted a reason to get at him. This chaos with Bobbity is the perfect excuse. Commanding him to tell him where his master is. Prompting Innocent Boo to shout for him to leave his buddy alone. This cues Zen Boo to fetch the wizard from his bubble in space. Urging everyone to relax. Turning to an organizer, he inquires if they'd like to do the honors. Who with pleasure doesn't hesitate to send them back to their native universe. Finally putting this madness to an end. In Universe 11, the trio arrives in what appears to be either Bobbity's ship or a new structure of his. Fuming to be at the cups of control only to see it slip away, he vows to assemble a new army and make them pay. Screaming for Deborah to find that Varga planet, and they will. Though, something is uncharacteristically off about the demon, who is faced in the opposite direction trembling. Years. Years of servitude! For the first time in eons, the King of Demons is free. He stomps in the wizard's direction, scowling he will pay for this, who begins trembling himself for other reasons. He bellows for Boo to kill Deborah immediately, who nonchalantly responds, nah, leaving him with little hope. <laughs> Spitting on his former captor, he slowly begins turning to stone. In a state of panic, he quickly tries to remember a counterspell, but before he can do so, he becomes nothing more than a statue. Calmly turning to Boo, he can't help but ask why he didn't obey Bobbity. The Jolly Majin explains he had a long conversation with his other buddy, the second Boo from before. He convinced him he's a big boy now and doesn't have to do what he doesn't want to, which brings a smile to the demon's face. He laughs, he is truly a chaotic now. In fact, he appreciates that quality, suggesting that since he has nowhere else to go, why not accompany him to the demon realm? He needs to reconquer his throne in hell. And just as innocent as ever, and since B likely isn't in the picture, he asks if he does so, can he have a dog? And as luck would have it, Deborah knows the perfect companion for him. With the help of the Majin, it didn't take much for the King of Demons to once again reclaim his place and royalty, keeping the statue of Bobbity as a trophy. We see there are some intriguing faces standing by his side. One in particular has my personal interest. In keeping his word, Deborah indeed had the perfect friend in mind for Majin Buu.